good afternoon. So we meet once again on a yes. Thursday evening for the design, design journey by the JS Institute of Design. And I'd like to welcome, of course, my speaker today, Nivedita Gupta, and Hello. all the participants. I hope you've been keeping well. The lockdown, of course, has been lifted. Um, I can see a lot of movement on the roads, but I hope you will take care and maintain your social distancing. Uh, today, we talk about interior photography with Nivedita, who's a young, very young, and very dynamic photographer who deals mainly with the architectural and interior photography. But before that, just a bit about Discover Design. Discover Design uh, is a series of webinars which we bring to you from the JS Institute of Design to create awareness about the topic of design. And we are not limited alone to just interiors. We deal with all context of interiors for the time being. In the past, we have covered um, many topics on styling and in interior, uh, colors and in interior, uh, uh, sustainability in interior, luxury in interior, uh, and many more. Uh, today, of course, we bring to you the aspect of photographing, photographing the interiors. So let me introduce you to Nivedita. Um, very dynamic. I mean, I see her work extremely happy with the kind of thought process you have developed, mainly because also maybe you have undergone uh, an design education, which I think helps you a little differently. But that is not to say that you cannot try your hand at interior photography if you haven't undergone a course. But I'll quickly uh, say two lines about Nivedita because also I want her to take, or take it on a little further. She is trained as an architect and um, is and also formerly in photography um, is based in New Delhi. With these two professions, of course, I'm very sure that she sort of collaborated this and uh, you know, applied one learning into the other as well to come up with her unique take on what she does in photography. Uh, you will probably see in the following uh, session today, there are many things I'm gonna ask her because I want to really check out what are the things that in influence her and how does she go about seeing through the lens of the uh, of the camera things which seem so ordinary and mundane to us so let's see what nivedita has to say so welcome nivedita thank you so much thank you for having me it's a pleasure to talk to you uh, i'd like you to just say a bit about yourself but before that okay let me oh i, I forget to introduce myself my name is nancy Ao and I am uh, the Dean at the JS Institute of Design. Uh, I have many years of experience, more than two decades of experience in education, but I think I'll always love it since this is an opportunity for me to meet many, many upcoming designers, established designers or designers who have all kinds of experiences. This is what keeps me young and it keeps me wanting to continue to be in education. So welcome Nivedita, let me go to now. Okay, I think we just have, uh, we also need to uh, let you know participants that all your questions that you would like to ask Nivedita and us may please be put down in the question and answer uh, portion of, the, of this meeting. Uh, feel free to ask as many as you want and we will take it up once the session is over. If in case we are not able to address all of them, we will come back to you with your answers, definitely. So have a good viewing and feel free to come back to us. Ask Nivedita, probe, it, probe her, find out, and she's going to give you many, many tips and tricks of the interior photography session. So Nivedita, tell me, a bit. tell me a bit about yourself. So yes, I'm Nivedita Gupta. I'm an um, architecture and interior photographer based out of Delhi, India. And uh, I have been practicing this since I came back from Spain with a degree in fine art photography, which was three years ago now, I feel old. <laughs> and uh, before that, I, uh, I had just graduated from Sushant School of Architecture as an architect and kind of was clueless about how I wanted to take architecture further into my 
career and also what about architecture interested me because at that point i had written about architecture i had photographed architecture and been a part of uh, an internship where i was given given a lot of design responsibility but i think the thing that interested me the most was documentation of spaces and uh, i started freelancing a bit and started photographing some work on my own which included a restaurant in delhi called the chatter house for mofa studios and then also a residence done by r plus d studios so i was getting a little bit of confidence on in in this direction of going towards architectural photography but uh, i th- i felt like there was no education in architectural photography that i could bank on or um really question the need for architecture photography so i decided to go to spain and do a masters in fine art photography which was a very liberating course where there was no uh, foundation on the way you can use photography to get your point across in in art and it really helped me convey through my photographs uh, what i wanted to say conceptually about a space and not just what the architect wanted me to convey Uh, about a space and uh, yeah i've been practicing since then right so we are going to uh, look deeper into your work following this uh, let's have i'd like to start the session by asking a poll question to the participants um yeah. let's see what that is so what makes an iconic photograph the way the photographer catches the unattainable or is it textural qualities and design language or is it an emotional narrative so i look forward to the participants giving their points of view and following this i'm going to ask nivedita which one of them does she believe in and let's see let's wait for it i'm very curious about what people think <laughs> yes <laughs> do i have an answer in mind so even even if these answers are varied i think you are going to probably have equally different points of view and is it all correct oh my god it says the way the photographer has caught the unattainable what do you think uh i think uh, some narrative and the textural quality and design can both catch the unattainable so i always try to go for the emotional narrative and through that i try to present something that maybe seems unattainable to other people because it might be my subjective emotional narrative with the building so i i felt like an emotional narrative is the most uh, uh i mean prominent thing for me while shooting but yes i agree that uh, there has to be something about a photo shoot in which the space uh, is brought out in a light that is unattainable through just uh, the concept or the design or the built and uh, is only visible through the photo or through the two dimensionality of a photograph correct so in essence you are saying that all three are parts of uh, making any photograph iconic and it probably will depend up upon the photographer to to lay more stress on one of these aspects and maybe develop that further so i i understand that the village cafe in muradabad i believe has been uh, one of your uh, favorite projects which you have taken undertaken and photographed that uh, can you help us understand how did you through your photographs convey the you know the the unique identity of this cafe um uh yeah uh, this is one of my favorite shoots till date because uh, the village cafe in essence is um, through design trying to evoke the nostalgia and memory of a village and it's not trying to replicate a village in any way in fact it is acknowledging the fact that in most of our cities we now have on the fringes a lot of urban villages that exist that do not look like what our con- uh, conventional notion of a village is they don't have limestone walls they don't have uh, rural uh, materials they don't have vernacular materials even and sometimes urban villages mostly look like a big dense concrete jungle and the designers who are uh, portal 92 uh, have really acknowledged that so uh, because they are acknowledging the memory of a village i wanted to use 
the idea of village women using this space as a kind of parody on how people walk through space to create photographs and uh, use them as props so i thought about uh, how these village village women uh, instead of being props if they could in fact be represented as the users of the space as the users of a so called village it could be really cool so there are some very provocative things that we decided to do which was to invite some village women who had been a part of the building of this cafe to come enjoy a drink with us or to come enjoy a drink between themselves and have a glass of wine and uh, have some salad and uh, sit and chill in the sun and gossip and enjoy and have a good time and for me the real joy was to watch them really open up and ease into this while i just watched them and took photos from every vantage point that i could find correct so for and me this was a very fun experience correct and uh, this is what i noticed that you are using women as part of the photo photographs and i don't see any men around so yeah. is it you are trying to uh, say something about women empowerment and putting the woman in front of the bar putting the woman at the entrance walking up the steps alone just saying you see you you are going to see the future in this manner yeah i just feel like there was a lot of authoritative character in their in their manner like the way they carried themselves not just at the village cafe but also at the school of dancing arches which is designed by samira rathore uh where uh, women basically these are women who are part of families that come to construction sites to build the school together and they build temporary shelters to live at the site while the entire project is being constructed so these are women that are an intricate part of the construction process and are also supporting and feeding families on the side while the men of the family are also uh, partaking in the construction so to see them walk around the space as if they own the space or as if they have been caretakers of the space for so long for me was the most confident representation of either of these projects and that's why i love photographing the women and i i don't think anybody minds the really brightly colored beautiful sarees that they're wearing and i really enjoyed uh, seeing how everybody uh, you know was really excited to try on new sarees and be a part of this experience and really enjoy their time shooting great it does sound all your vision about the photography has been reflected in this help me understand i'm going to uh, shall we move on to the next one i'd like to ask uh, ask nivedita about your preparation for a, for a photo shoot the last the last one please yes uh, how do you prepare for a photo shoot like, like like let's say for the opium showroom what what are the things do, that you prepare for is it the is it the story is it the technical preparation uh, can you just take us through that um every project has been a different story for me and uh with sanchit from renesa architects who has designed the opium store it is always a new story for every project which i really enjoy because um with opium these stores were made in places where uh the public was throng thronging the places dense in a dense manner so one was at an airport and one was in a very densely populated mall in a dense locality of mumbai so um both these places uh people immediately noticed the store when they saw the chartreuse neon green shining in the store and uh, it immediately caught their attention and that is something that we felt could not be conveyed through photographs it could be conveyed through some sort of film in which we record how people are stopping in their busy schedule of transit transiting from one city to another or from one shop to another to look at a store which is very rare nowadays because uh, people are moving at a very fast pace so um and the preparation that we did was basically stand outside the store and watch people so it was basically people watching that got us the concept of the photo shoot and the video shoot so if you see a lot of the shots of this photo shoot have been taken from outside the store uh looking towards the store looking inwards at how people are using the space or walking in and playing with the mirrors and the shelves which can all be opened and moved around and there is a video specifically for this in which uh both the concave and convex mirror of the opium store that can be rotated around around the swivel 
have been used to create different reflections and we just played with that to make a crazy video in which you can see the entire store through just a 30 second clip so that was our preparation for this right in fact this all the visuals gave me a feeling of being in the galactic space <laughs> and, and, and i can imagine if we were there uh, the uh, the rotation. <laughs> it's so graphic i don't know whether that was intentional but very space like Probably I don't know if it was difficult to shoot with you know the 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 very the optical illusion of the lines along with neon lights was it technically a challenge? Uh, technically yes, because uh, you have the artificial light from the airport or from wherever the space is inside influencing the light of the store. Even though the designer has full control over designing the lights inside the store. Uh, they really don't have a say on what is happening outside and to control that was difficult in the camera and after but um, I think we finally arrived at the true colors of the store because this neon green if it doesn't come through through the photo shoot then it was quite pointless so we were really happy with the pictures in the end. <laughs> yeah they give I I'm sure that it really looks it speaks louder than what uh, what I would probably see it in reality. Let's have the next one, uh, which is, oh, there is a poll question again for the participants. This time we really wanted to check out what, can we have the question please? What the participants think, which is the most challenging element to capture while photographing an interior space? Is it the light and the shadow, furniture layout, or is it colors in the space? So, uh, yes, I'm sure all these things are important, but let's see what they think is more important than the other one. And Nivedita, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> and, uh, I'm sure you can have a better explanation than all of us. Okay. Oh, so wow. Are they correct? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I would say for me, the, the least challenging element for me is light and shadow. Oh, <laughs> And I think the most challenging element for me in any photo shoot is whatever I hate most about the, the photo shoot or the most challenging thing is usually something that I am still new at or trying to figure okay. out. So, so okay. I feel like... In the meantime, can I quickly button with another question? Yes. Does it mean if you, if you are very comfortable with light and shadow, does it mean because you've been trained technically as well as through your practice, to handle light and shadow as being very integral to your work. So, you know, with practice and of course, through certain formal training and understanding, you've managed it very well. Yeah, and, I, and um, subconsciously it has somehow become part of uh, my process, like to always notice how the light and shadow is moving through the building, especially because I love photographing interiors in natural light. But uh, I have to say, like, I find this fascinating about light and shadow that uh, they're kind of like, even though it's not uh, accurate, but every building kind of is like a sundial where the movement of light and shadow can tell you what time of day it is and what sort of experience you might get inside a space and whether you can inhabit that space at that, that particular time of day and how quiet I might find that space at that moment if the birds will be around that area because of the harsh sunlight or not. So all these pointers are really fascinating for me and I can sit in one corner of a room for hours to notice all these changes happening. So right. for me, that's the most fun. So that will be my next question to you. So uh, I guess this is a cafe. Is it a... Uh, this is a board game cafe called uh, the Unlocked Cafe in... Um, Gurgaon and it's uh, called the Geometrication Project by Renesa Architecture. Okay. So just, I would like to ask you very pointedly, it really looks very interesting in my mind. Thank you. Um, you know, such complexity of geometrical shapes and negatives and colors combined on the floor, on the walls, on all elements must have been a very difficult uh, preparation uh, for you because I, I don't know how you visualize. So can you help us understand as a photographer, what all do you prepare beforehand to get a shoot like this, to get the result like this? Uh, and thank you for asking me this question because this has been one of my most challenging shoots when it comes to preparation and also 
the process of the shoot itself because um, here the architect who's again Sanchit Arora from Renesa uh, designed the space like a board game itself because he wanted to bring the essence of a board game into the way you transit inside the space. So you will see all sorts of geometrical elements that are uh, spattered across the walls, through the arches, in the furniture, even in the decor and the way the plates are laid out uh, because it is a restaurant or, and a cafe in the end. So for me, I had to envision that, uh, kind of gauge all of that and also come up with some sort of idea that ties everything together. So uh, we used to go to sites, this site together again and again to see how it was growing. And then on the day of the shoot, we decided to use uh, geometrical mirrors as a part of the shoot and create this photo series called The Man in the Mirror in which um, basically Sanchit himself is a part of the shoot, but you can never see him clearly. And uh, you can only see his body profile holding up an, a large human-sized gigantic mirror, which is either a triangle or a circle, uh, which, has, which is the language of the cafe. And it reflects whatever is uh, in front of the mirror, which is also a sort of erratic geometry and somehow adds to the photo and makes it two dimensional. So we, we didn't want to represent the cafe by taking wide shot angles at all. We wanted to take very straightforward two dimensional photos, but because we wanted to show the third dimension, we chose a mirror as our uh, weapon and kind of reflected off of really crazy shadows and lights that were falling everywhere in the cafe. And we spent an entire night shooting this. And or the photo that you see on the right is actually the early morning shot, which was when we were wrapping up. And I finally noticed that there was some daylight creeping into the shot. So there was no mirror here and just the natural light flooding into the cafe before we wrapped up. So this was, uh, this was a shoot that required a lot of preparation and also a lot of experimenting till the very end, till we were shooting. If you were to quantify the hours, what would you say? How many hours was that? I would say this, uh, the ideation for the shoot took about three, four days uh, between Sanchit and I. And um, I think the shoot was an entire night. We stretched an entire night and somehow got it done. But yeah, we changed the entire furniture layout and we moved things around, which uh, was quite crazy. It took a lot of hours. Uh, of the shoot to just move all the furniture out and design it exactly as we would like it to be so that we can put the man in the mirror in the frame and uh, make him a part of the space. So that required a lot of um, conceptualizing again. I can see that uh, your training as a designer really worked very well in the compositions <laughs> that you have put up because literally every element that is next to the other, its shadow and the and the sh and the harsh cutting shadow on the floor all seem to be literally been planned. And so, do you think you are actually did you do this because you were trained designer, or is it because it's natural? This uh, I I think. Uh the design didn't end with the shoot. Like, I think we were designing till the last moment. I think Sanchit and I were designing till the last shot was taken. And I think we had questions about where every chair could be, where mirrors could be. Does a mirror belong on the wall or can it also be a vessel on the floor? And does every chair have to be properly placed in a composed photograph or it can it prop out of a very weird angle in a photograph and create some uh, uh, framing for something else that is more important. So I think till the very end, uh, we were designing and uh, here I really enjoyed my training as, a, as an architect, I think, and was able to use it well. So that was really fun for me. I can see a real close collaboration between the interior designer and the photographer over here. Okay, this, this I believe you have to tell the story about this famous personality. But my one question would be whether when you were photographing, whether you had the personality in mind and did you really wanted to outface the personality of the, the celebrity who owns the store? So please tell the story. That's a very interesting question. Um, I think I, I had it at the back of my mind that I was photographing for 
uh, well, Virat Kohli. This is Virat Kohli's uh, shoe design venture. It's called One Eight, and he opened a retail store in Manesar Gurgaon. And uh, again, this is designed by Renessa, and we wanted to represent the the different layout in which shoes are put up on the wall through something that uh, a photograph cannot say. Basically, it had to be animated, and uh, the shoes had to kind of uh, be shown in a layout that was flattering, but did not take away from the shelves that uh, Sanjit had designed specifically for this uh, store. Uh, I can say that I can see that kind of fire and ambition in Sanjit that I can say is representative of Virat Kohli because he uh, he looks up to him, and also I can see that. Um, Sanjit stops at nothing when it comes to design, and and that doesn't stop even when we are doing the photo shoot. So we created this animated GIF, which was probably one of the first that I've ever done, which was just a simple GIF looking at the wall directly, in which he and I just moved around the shelves on which the shoes were placed and created this rhythmic movement. to uh, animate the entire wall just through one photograph and we created a gif that became really popular on instagram and was shared by people who were following the shoe brand and virat kohli and sanjit and i so that was one of our first successful um, i think ideas in which we moved beyond a photograph to represent uh, a retail store great that's great to know so much of thought behind it and you are trying to build on the concept did yeah. virat kohli agree with all this yeah i think um, he he had a wind about this but i'm not sure uh, what was his reaction when he saw the finished product because uh, i was out of the loop then but i can find out more about that <laughs> <laughs> no just to be serious okay so uh, this is a school bhadran and uh, one can see that is it very much is it uh, um, modeled on the louis kahn uh, you know famous brick structures uh, and i wanted to know whether more than that the photographs how do they convey the vision of the school or did you have that in mind um actually this is probably one of my slowest and um, most thought out uh, shoots i could say because i have been visiting the school since i came back from spain and this is one of my first shoots with samira rathor so we went together to see the school because we were photographing the village next to the school for another exhibition that is called the death of architecture exhibition and uh, she decided to take me for a site visit to the school to the school and at that time the arches were still being constructed the brick walls were still under construction so i saw the school in a very different light and since then i have visited the school at least 3 4 times seen it in the rain in heavy dense rain when it was impossible to step out of these corridors and also seen it in really harsh june weather where i had to step out to take a photo and then i was sweating so much that i had to run back in and spray water all over me because otherwise i would have dehydrated and died so <laughs> i have seen the school change form and i have also seen myself <laughs> struggle in every season with this school but um uh this is uh, really close to my heart because i i have tried to represent the different moments i had in the school and also what samira has told me about the school about how it started as a scribble of a child and how the arches are like dancing because she saw that in the drawing of a child and uh, how something so playful and innocent has translated into such an iconic piece of architecture where people from all over gujarat come and see the school and it might possibly be uh, uh, some a, a piece of architecture that uh, people go there to study about so i i have tried to represent all of that and even the women that were there at site i have tried to represent that through the photos so i've tried to walk in their shoes basically walk in the shoes of all the women that have helped me create this photo shoot <laughs> so so you actually really want to show, give the essence and the spirit of the school itself uh, yes i'm re really impressed by that okay before we move on to the next uh, there is a poll question be ready for it because now we are changing a little shifting outwards and what is right. it uh, photographer a photographer develops 
his or her style. I think we have a different poll question over here. It was meant to be for black and white. Oh, okay. So can we move on to this? Because I uh, this poll question is a little earlier than normal. Can you check on that? Anyway, um, maybe we can move on to the next. Uh, so we'd like to go to the next slide, please. And take this poll question a little later. So I believe after the colored photography that you did for the school, you chose to then move on to also capture it on black and white. Yes. And this is what intrigues me a lot. There is a lot, a different story told by the black and white. Can you help us understand what is that? How does it, does it influence you differently because it is black and white? Yeah, there were certain aspects of the school that really influenced me only in black and white or only in terms of um, a very abstract movement of time because you can see in these photos that um, there are arches that the light is filtering through and hitting the inside spaces of the school and also how the harsh sun is creating really stark shadows mm -hmm. in which the people are existing and the spaces are getting cut in very harsh corners of light. So. Uh, when I was there in June photographing the school uh, when it was completely ready, again, this idea of time and the sundial and how the arches are kind of making the light move through the space while I'm uh, moving through the space and shooting different shots that are uh, in color, I would stop at some, sp at sp at some space where I see that... Um, this light and shadow effect is causing something that will not happen again at any point during the rest of the day. And it was imperative for me to capture it at that moment because it conveyed something that will never happen again, which is very difficult to say about architecture photography because architecture photography somehow is not influenced by uh, the passage of time and it can repeat itself. But uh, the shadows and the light do not repeat themselves in the same day again. And that's why I wanted to take the shot in black and white so that everybody's attention is directed only towards the light and shadow and nothing else. And it, it's devoid of time completely. All right. So let's look at some more of the photographs for you to perhaps explain your point even uh, better. So these are also from the same school. Right. And uh, uh, again, when I was shooting different areas of the school, I would kind of look towards my left or look between blocks to see some shadow creeping in that I hadn't noticed mm -hmm. uh, while shooting it through the rest of the day. Or a tree creating this kind of uh, moment on one arch or the branch of an arch that I felt was very irregular from how the rest of the wall was looking. So for me that anomaly and that ambiguity was really interesting and that made me want to take this shot and reduce it to just the pure concept of light and shadow. And that's why I wanted to make these black and white images. Right. These are very close to my heart. Right. Now, so this is a, a retail outlet called Tiano. Yes, this is in Mumbai. Uh, and and I, I want to make my first comment on this because it made this, this photograph made me think of literally a narrative about a person and the space, the relationship just seemed to be so, it, it's so heavy with expectation. I'm sure it's all different in our minds, but that sort of really impacted my vision of black and white. I didn't know whether retail outlet could be photographed like that. How do you think this, what is the story you're trying to tell us? So um, when I reached the store and uh, again, this, I shot this store twice. One was when it was just a bare shell and one when it had been completely styled to include all the furniture, which is uh, what it is a store of. So when I went there the first time to shoot just the bare shell, um, for me, it seemed like when I entered the store, it seemed like this kind of temple where you see the shrine in the middle and there is a light falling on that shrine that guides you towards that, like the Garbha Griha of a Hindu temple. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, that middle, the in the right photograph, in the photograph on the right, the light that is filtering through the fins uh, between that display 
that kind of looked to me like the light coming out of a shrine and i wanted to direct all the attention towards that even in the wide shot photo of this uh, wide angle uh, shot of this uh, space and also in shots like this in which a person can be seen directly looking at this uh, corner that i'm talking about i wanted to make this the center of attention and here i wanted to include something that can count as retail but not uh, take away from the space which was really beautiful and designed really beautifully by studio pk so right. that's you see very minimal artwork or maybe you just see one light which is on in a space which is otherwise naturally lit and i created these shots uh, specifically when there was no retail item inside the store yet right so i'm going to move on to the next one please which i know for sure is just amazing i mean i can see every detail in this so tell me technically is there some magic in your hands or <laughs> what have you done here thank you so much this is a uh, uh, this is one of my most special shoots this is in fact one of the shoots that i did before i went to spain to get my education in photography and uh, i remember the architect who is manish gulati from mofa studios telling me that he usually hates symmetrical shots of his spaces because he designs kind of parametric spaces and likes to experiment with angles in a way that things look asymmetrical uh, so he said that um, i usually hate symmetrical shots of my spaces but this shot has uh, really stayed with me so for me that was the most moving comment i could get on the entire photo set that i gave to him from the designer himself and yeah that was really special and uh, here uh, i remember going into the space which is chatter house which is a bar in uh, khan market delhi and uh, looking at the space and immediately kind of reminiscing this kind of cinematic uh, bar from the 80s or bar from the 70s feel mm -hmm. and trying to go for that in every shot in every shot whether it was with artificial light or whether with natural light as you see here in this photograph so i just wanted to create something very very cinematic and uh, kind of like hollywood from the 80s that's true Yes, you can feel that. You can feel that. I'm glad you're saying that because I was going I, for that. I would expect maybe one of the protagonists to come in and wait at the cafe, at the table uh, and some mysterious lady comes in. So yeah, I, yeah, and I think I would imagine that now if I were to do this maybe I would create a video of this entire story running between between someone who comes to one of the tables and has a seat on the side and then you know i'm still looking at the frame the same way maybe i recreate all the photos but this time uh, in the same frame but with people and that would right. be interesting <laughs> so anyway deta now let's move on to something a little bit more personal to you so uh, okay so shall we have the next slide please okay since this is going to be really uh, so let's see what the poll question is i think all of us bring in all of us bringing in a bring in a little bit of ourselves when we take up something like photography so what does a photographer a photographer develops his or her style by following the signature style of the mentor or following the wishes of the client i think clients are also very they are very dominating i see that uh, or experimenting with their own work till they discover their style so let's see what the participants feel oh wow <laughs> so there is so <laughs> much <you're> not going for <laughs> everybody is so clear how they want to do that i'm so glad i think everybody has it more figured out than i do <laughs> <laughs> really so yeah but let's not let's not forget our clients because they're the ones who are paying for many things yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think uh, my story is that uh, i i i have learned from my mentor a lot i've learned from the person who inspired me to get into the profession a lot and i'm still trying to find my style but i think as soon as i find my style i'll become complacent so i'm very glad that i don't have a style yet 
<laughs> so, uh, since you mentioned uh, a mentor or somebody who really inspires you, can you help us understand how did Helen Binet, uh, you know, get, how did you see her work? What do you think? Why, why does she inspire so much? Um, so, I remember being in uh, college and writing a paper about the paradox of architecture photography and how uh, the the thin line between what a photographer wants to say and what an architect wants to say can somehow make the difference in how you represent architecture through photographs. So while I was writing this paper, the most uh, influential person for me was Helene Binet because when I looked at her photos, I could clearly see that she was bringing something to the project that even the architect was surprised by. And uh, this is something that moved me so powerfully that I remember nights where I would con continuously look at her work or look at a photograph that she shot for Peter Zumthor and keep on admiring the way the light was falling in the space and writing emails to her about how I went to Jantar Mantar right after when she went to Jantar Mantar to photograph it to see what she could see and uh, uh, also meeting her in Spain while I was studying there. So her work has had a massive influence on me because she she really beautifully tries to portray the way light enters a building and sometimes you cannot tell which part of building or what is the scale of the building from what she takes and architects embrace that about her work and that is something that I thought was missing in the representation of architecture in India and I wanted to bring it back to our country so quickly that uh, I immediately wanted to get on with uh, photographing and she inspired me to push myself and go for it. In fact, in many ways, I think she has focused through her photographs the nuances of the building, which may be missed out completely if you're just watching it uh, you know, in reality. Yes, I totally agree. Amazing. I can't imagine how she's, in fact, in the earlier photograph, how has she got, how has she lit up the place to get this different grays on just a slightly different plane and I think we really should figure that out. I don't yeah. know if it's a technical Kamal or, or or she got the lighting just at an instance of something. It's a mix of both and I think she spends a lot of time looking at uh, the space and trying to concentrate on one corner or aspect of the space to see how it changes through the day. And sometimes it's not even architecture. I have uh, seen work in which she has gone to the Atacama Desert and uh, photographed the sand dunes of Atacama Desert in a way that is so abstract and still so beautiful that you are mesmerized by the light and shadow that is falling on sand dunes. And you cannot tell at any point that this is a sand dune. So for me, the only pointer was that, okay, she told us that yes, these are from the Atacama Desert, but they made us feel like there are th this was an emotional narrative, which is how I also got into the idea of putting an emotional narrative into my photos because it moves you. These photos moved me, really moved me. Right. Um, I, I think many of our participants probably would now start thinking, is there somebody whom they would like to look up to? And it's a good search. Please go out and try to find that. Let's look at your, your next mentor whom you had mentioned earlier. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? Right, so Alberto Campo, yes. um, very interesting. I think what I am really amazed by also is the, the way he has actually visualized it on a paper before going onto the site too. So just tell us whether this is a normal process of visualizing by everybody, all photographers. Uh, and why do you find his work so exceptional? So this is this photograph has been taken by Javier Callejas, who is uh, uh, a photographer based in Spain, uh, who is my mentor. And I worked with, I got a chance to work with while I was uh, studying in Spain. So I just wrote to him out of the blue and uh, asked him if I could come work with him. And we have since then shot a lot of projects together, both in Spain and in India. And I'm really lucky to have gone to one of Alberto Campo Baeza's projects to see the purity of design, which I, uh, I have rarely seen in architecture because everybody tries to decorate their architecture in so many materials and in so many concepts that some, somehow the purity goes away. But for example, in this photo that you're seeing, uh, 
this is called Cielo in Terra, and this is basically a tomb in which the ashes have been suspended in this box and hung inside this bigger cube. And this is the entire concept of the space. So to, to see the sketch and then to see the actuality for me was really beautiful because um, sometimes Campo Baeza creates a, a space which is really beautifully represented by Javi, but also sometimes Javi has managed to capture his work in ways that have given Campo Baeza visions about his architecture that he can translate into new sketches that he even he didn't perceive. So uh, some of the buildings that have been photographed by Javi for Campo Baeza have resulted in photos that really moved me and uh, I have been lucky to be a part of also and one of these, one of those buildings is this uh, tomb. So I, I was really moved by this architecture and that's why I wanted to work with Javi. I think we have to apologize for not putting down the photographer's name, but it is Javi as mentioned by you, Nivedita, and we are going to take care of that in future. Um, but He actually I wanted to be a part of the uh, uh, panel today. <laughs> like he was really excited to hear that I was doing this and he oh, said, uh, Say my hello to everyone. He's flying from oh, Canary Island. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure as we move ahead, we will be covering more and more. I, I think people with a heart and soul who have such an eye also. We, uh, But we'd like to thank him for that. And as I said, we apologize for not being able to write down his name and we missed it. Uh, from, so we are now going to take you, Nivedita, to a lot of questions. People have been waiting in queue to ask you questions regarding your work, regarding your personal beliefs. And um, so let me start with, uh, sorry, let me just begin with, uh, okay, so let's begin with Rahul. And uh, Rahul says, he's asking, what is the basis for differentiating architecture and interior photography from other forms of photography, such as wildlife or people, wedding. Um, so un other than what you are photographing your itself, uh, can you help them understand the difference or what you think about it? Uh, um, in essence, I think architecture and interiors are different to be photographed than wildlife or nature or cinema for example, because uh, there is this absence of something animated or something moving from the frame. So you could be sitting in one position for hours and still uh, kind of obtain that same frame from the building. So this is the one thing that differentiates architecture and interiors from uh, the other fields. But what also makes it interesting is there is a, a lot of things that might change in that one frame through the day like the light and the shadow or just the quality of uh, interior ambient light in the space if it is interiors that we are talking about so in that way it it still remains interesting even though you might not uh, shift from your position through the entire day so sometimes i i imagine that i could go to a building and just stand in one position and take a take the same shot through multiple times in the day and you know uh, convey the entire photo shoot through just that. Right. So thank you for that. Rahul, I hope it answers some of your queries. Uh, Shubhams asks, uh, what is the process that you follow while doing a project in interior photography? So um, maybe a very quick answer to the process because maybe preparation, I don't know. Could you help, help him answer that? Uh, it generally varies for the kind of project it is. If it's a residence project, sometimes I work with a stylist on board to uh, kind of uh, revamp the interiors in a way that can help compose different shots with certain decor in mind. Or if it is a restaurant like the Unlock Cafe, which is the geometrication project, uh, it has taken much more time and much more styling than uh, you would generally imagine for an interior shoot because we completely renovated just for the photo shoot the way the furniture was laid out and the way the decor was in the space. So it varies, but the process kind of is similar in the sense that you have to imagine what can exist and not just uh, make do with what you have in the space. Mm -hmm. Okay, very interesting personal question. 
uh, Manish Sars, can you please share your experience on making architectural interior design photography as a profession? What would your advice be to begin a career in this field? Um, I think uh, for me, the two things that helped were firstly, the fact that I got to work with my mentor which is Javier Callejas. Uh, so that gave me a lot of direction and also gave me a lot of confidence in the back end stuff that you have to get out of the way to be able to create something. And uh, since I got that confidence, then I could concentrate on the really important stuff, which is to find my own style, I guess, or to try to do every shoot differently. And the other thing that helped was that I know that this was a very niche field three years ago when I started and um, it was very difficult for me to get it, get the point across, but I got a lot of support from my parents and from mm -hmm. my friends because everybody had a certain confidence in me from what they had seen already in architecture and also from what I might have been clicking um, in my free time in Auroville while interning over there or from my master's project that I showed to a lot of architects after coming back say, saying this, that, hey, I don't have a portfolio, but here is my master's work. And it is related to the representation of space. So I would love it. I would love shooting your space, but give me a chance based off, you know, what you see here instead of any commercial uh, commissions, basically. So I'm sure, I'm sure your experience and whatever you're speaking about your change is going to inspire many of them to look at this new career or perhaps any other new career. I would love that. So uh, another question from Vikram, uh, how does photography change or cater to modern architecture in comparison to historical architecture? That's uh, a very interesting question uh, for me. Like uh, one thing is uh, on the top of my mind, I can say that somehow I feel like whenever I go to a historical place that I don't feel like lifting my camera because what I see, the intricacies of design and the ornamentation that I see in some historical buildings I feel like uh, the camera cannot capture that. But on the other end of the spectrum, I can also say that I'm beginning to question uh, if like painting photography is also not dying slowly and mm -hmm. whether now we are not moving on to another medium, which could be video or which could be a certain dystopic way of representing space. But uh, I think now we are at that point in modern architecture or postmodern architecture where you could question the need for representing architecture using a photo. And I realized that that kind of questions the need for my profession, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> right. Um, uh, if I may ask Nivedita, you'll have to say maybe one one line answer because there are so many questions. Okay, okay, okay. I'll try to keep it short. No, I know. I, I would love to hear every bit I'm, and I'm sure so do the people who are asking you uh, but because we want to try to answer as many questions yeah. uh, how can one find clients in the field of interior photography this is by isha uh, write to whoever you like email them tell them you love their work meet them yes mm -hmm. just chase them around <laughs> you know okay, this is to find clients uh, yeah, i mean that is how i started in the business okay. because i was following up the work of a lot of architects i loved and i just wanted to start shooting for them immediately <laughs> Correct. Uh, Lajja has a question for you. Which do you prefer to use between natural light and artificial light? Only and natural light. Natural light. Okay. And how can you combine both sources of light? Um, do you combine them ever? I have combined them, but I have found that they kind of irritate each other a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get along. <laughs> okay. okay, one question from Sahil and Viti. Are there specific tools and cameras that you work with uh, which work specifically well for interiors? Interior uh, I, I think uh, if for interiors in general, you might need to work with a stylist because I find that a stylist somehow has something to say sometimes that I have not thought about. But the rest are kind of tricks of the trade and you learn them as you go. As you go along. Yeah. Oh, all right, a question from Chandani. How important is capturing wide angle shots as opposed to close up shots in interior photography? I have never gone to a photo shoot and said that I want to take wide angle and I want to take close up. I always question the need for either or say that maybe a shoot doesn't require either of them at all. So you have to really go to a project and 
try to question why you're taking any shot and not classify it on the base of the angle so a very nice uh, uh, a very concerning question from avni she wonders that following your bachelor's in architecture how did you end up deciding to switch to architectural photography instead um i just as i said before i was more interested i think in studying how people have documented space over the over the years and how people have been doing that since the time of analog photography when it was all black and white to now when it is color and it's digital and it can be multiplied and um it can be used everywhere on the internet so for me that representation of architecture has always been interesting and it's not limited to photography i also love how renders are evolving over time and how people are uh, creating stories inside their renders even now so the post modernism that is there in the documentation of architecture really pushed me so i i decided that i'm not that great at designing but maybe i can be good at this so i decided to pursue this <laughs> all right so i hope uh, so that question was by twinkle and apni and i hope uh, you know nivedita has been able to uh, help you understand about her decision uh, divyank asks are there some key shots that you always take in each project for example a bird's eye view that captures as much as possible so is that how you work i have never gone to a project and tried to in one photograph capture as much as possible unless that is the only concept that i'm going for so i always question that i never want to capture everything because if i'm doing that then there is no point for a person to physically come experience the space right so there's an a question which is based on your input about moving furniture how much do you alter the space in terms of moving furniture or products changing curtains to make the space click better um sometimes uh, the clients are not bothered and sometimes they want to throw me out <laughs> so <laughs> that that variance is there <laughs> that's a good one i know so we must let them also know clients are also a part of it i love all my clients i love working with all the architects that i'm working with <laughs> okay um abhijit and rohitika rohita are asking isn't experimentation the greatest key to crack and build architectural photography definitely i think uh, i mean i could say that for architecture as well if you want to find the event you have to keep experimenting with your style and you can't settle for a single style i think you have to keep questioning uh, the need for one style because we are all moving at a very fast pace and uh, design photography and renders are all evolving too fast so right so next question is by sukriti and driti how do you strike a balance between what you want from a photograph and what the client wants from the photograph in terms of furniture layout or anything else usually if a client wants certain photographs i provide them and then i always try to create this photo mm. set in certain shots that surprise them because i want to give them something that they might not have seen in the space or imagined the space to behave as and that is my personal contribution to it so both right. of them okay this is this is a very very important question for komudi uh, what is your advice to someone who has just finished their masters in space design to go ahead and make a career in architectural photography does one directly do masters in photography or work first i would say go with the flow if you have already done a masters in space design that's great because you have a very nuanced idea of what space design is and what it behaves like and maybe take it from there make maybe take it from what you have learned in your masters instead of trying to get a masters in photography and get some work experience somehow because uh, what you have learned in your masters is also going to be very specific and very directed so you can use that in your photography before you try to jump into studying more about photography you know uh, an admirer is saying your work is amazing thank you so much admirer vidita so could you also recommend other photographers in india whose work we may like to follow there's a lot of them um, i have friends who are also practicing suryan and dang and there is uh, they have also shot for renessa and there is uh, there is a 
photographer who photographs uh, moving figures basically when he's shooting architecture and also does a lot of theater work. Um, there's an animator who shoots and uh, renders, I mean, who makes renders that look exactly like uh, photographs. His name is Anirudh Acharya. And there's Ishita, I think her project is called The Fishy Project. So there is a lot of them and I could... So Nirudita, may I also take the liberty to tell the participants who want to know more, please write to us. We will uh, respond to you with some details so that you can go ahead and look up some uh, photographers whom you'd like to follow. Uh, this could be nationally as well as outside the country. Um, have, uh, better if, individuals if, just on if you engaged in that as well. Okay. Uh, there are some more questions. I'm going to try to get to the uh, to the uh, to almost all of them, if possible. Uh, which camera do you use and recommend? I can't reveal the tricks of my trade. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, perhaps you can give a personal call and we can discuss that. <laughs> you can let them know which ones are possible. I am currently using a Canon 5DS, which is a DSLR, full frame DSLR. It's not the camera, right? It's the photographer. Yes, I, I, that was just a joke though. I, I have spoken about what, I cam what camera I use because I okay. feel like uh, being tech savvy is the farthest from... Okay, now AI comes the AI. tricky question. What are the common mistakes that architectural photographers often make in, in your opinion? I think we've brushed up on that kind of the fact that you go to a site and try to take as many shots as possible to cover everything or to shoot uh, extremely wide angle shots just because you think they are required to summarize the entire space. I think these are some common mistakes that a lot of architecture photographers are making that I question. So yeah, these I would try to avoid. Right. So I'm trying, I'm hoping to get through the questions again in a while. Uh, how important is it to edit photographs? And is there any other app other than Photoshop? Oh, um, uh, editing um, is quite like fluid now. You could edit on your phone even. It's important to edit if you've been shooting in a way that requires editing, like multiple exposures. But you could also just uh, shoot on your phone. And I have had a photo shoot with uh, Shitish Dogra who designs furniture where we shot his entire line of uh, newborn series, which is a series of furniture called functional sculptures just on the phone. So you could be shooting in either way with a lot of editing or without. Right. Um, how do you manage to deal with the clients when it comes to the time consumption to document the project, especially in the case of residential projects? Um, I think we always agree on a certain time that would be required to um, shoot the project. And I think as the profession, as the profession has grown, I have been able to clearly uh, elaborate to the client how much time I might require. But I always leave a window of time because I always want to experiment a little bit with what uh, different I can create in terms of art and not just document the space as the client requires. So I always keep a window of time for that. So I hope Bharat, that would uh, that would help you with that understanding. Do you shoot just raw or multiple exposures? I shoot both. All right. Okay. And Vyush, Vyush Gupta wants to know how many shots does a client ask you to create in a day, and how many days does it does the shoot last? I wish clients were that predictable, but they're not. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need a separate session for that. Because yes. <laughs> like for any, in any business, clients yes. have to be understood really well. Yes. So mm -hmm. it's not just, but I'm sure that you would join any of our programs if you were to cover that as well. How can we apply to work with you then, Navidita? Everybody I love that. Please write to me. I, I don't know how I can plug in my Instagram or... Um, uh, on the what chat. we will do is we will continue to uh, give you information about Navidita. Can you write to us? You have our uh, you have our email. Please write to JSIT. Be in touch with us. Anything that you may want to know about Navidita, we will be ready to forward it to you. So I'd love that. <laughs> we we work with we intend to work with Navidita very very closely. If Today, the session has been of interest to you and you have found a lot of tips and tricks from Nivedita 
about interior photography, architectural photography. If you are interested to pursue uh, this, uh, the, this line of information, we want to inform you that JS Institute of Design is planning a short-term program in interior photography. Uh, and Nivedita would be a main, she would be helping us to set it up and to probably uh, take it forward. Yes, um, I love it. So please do feel, do feel free to come back and ask us any questions that you may have. If you'd like to know more about the kind of programs or want us to bring programs to you of specific nature of a kind, please feel free to ask us and write to us. Uh, we are starting the interviews for the August batch. Uh, and those of you are, who are interested to inquire with us about the kind of programs, please write to us again or call us up or send us a message. We we'll look forward to keeping in touch with you the same time Thursday, uh, every Thursday at four o'clock. Uh, Nivedita, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you so for, much. For really sharing some of your most intimate, beautiful tricks, I would say, all about the kind, the way you work. Um, it was a pleasure to see the, to see your work, reminds us of our, you know, the ba a basic elementary design presented in such a beautiful manner. Thank and you so, so much. I know I that, have great time all that all learning has helped you to do that. I do think over that's what we would in we intend to pursue our aim to bring that learning to our students at the programs that we are uh, we are projecting at js institute of design i would love to be a part of that thank you for once again and thank you participants for joining us we thank you everyone bye 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 stay safe and take care you too.